As the July 1, 2024 deadline approaches, the transitional government of Captain Ibrahim Trahore in Burkina Faso is preparing to hand over power. Trahore was appointed interim president in October 2022, after taking control in a military coup the previous month. During his tenure, Trahore has pledged to oversee a transition to civilian rule, with elections scheduled for July 2024. However, recent developments suggest the people of Burkina Faso may want Trahore to remain in power beyond that date. On May 25th and 26th, the government called for national consultations in the capital city of Ouagadougou. This will bring together representatives from civil society, political parties, and the military to discuss the next steps in the transition process. The meetings will allow us to take stock of the past months and decide whether to continue the transition and in what form," said Ami Zilabo, the Minister of Territorial Administration, in a televised statement. The announcement comes after Burkina Faso's Transitional Legislative Assembly approved a plan for a national forum on the country's future. This forum will give the Burkina Bay people a direct say in shaping the post-transition period. Interestingly, many citizens appear to be in favor of extending Trahore's rule. On May 11th, thousands gathered in Ouagadougou's municipal stadium to pledge their support for prolonging the captain's term. We've enjoyed Trahore's leadership so much that we don't want a new leader to replace him, said one attendee. Trahore's tenure has been marked by a renewed focus on agriculture and the mining sector. Through initiatives like the Agro-Pastoral Offensive and the construction of a gold refinery, he has sought to boost Burkina Faso's economic self-sufficiency. As the country prepares for a pivotal moment, the public's appetite for continuity under Trahore's command will be a crucial factor in determining Burkina Faso's political future. In a rare display of public support for a ruling government in Africa, thousands of Burkina Bay citizens recently gathered to demand the extension of Captain Ibrahim Trahore's transitional leadership in Burkina Faso. Trahore, who took power in a military coup in September 2022, is currently serving as the country's interim president. He had previously pledged to oversee a transition to civilian rule, with elections scheduled for July 2024. However, the massive turnout at a rally in the capital's municipal stadium on May 11th suggests that many Burkina Bay are eager to see Trahare remain in power beyond the transition period. Interestingly, the crowd was not limited to just local residents. It included activists and visitors from neighboring Sahel countries as well. This indicates that Trahore's support extends well beyond Burkina Faso's borders. These people came to support Trahore because they know how committed and dedicated he has been to the country, said one attendee. Yet, despite the scale of the pro-Trahore demonstration, Western media outlets have largely ignored the event. Some observers believe this reflects a bias towards portraying a narrative that suits Western interests. If it was the reverse, and people were gathering to demand an end to Trahore's rule, the Western media would be all over it, noted a local activist. This raises questions about the media's role in shaping the public's perception of African leaders, especially those who do not align with Western ideals of democracy. For Africans who have suffered for decades under democratic governments, what's more important is a strong and patriotic leader who is ready to protect their interests, the activist added. As Burkina Faso approaches the July 2024 deadline, the groundswell of support for Trahare's continued leadership will be a crucial factor in determining the country's political future. Thousands of citizens gathered in the capital city of Ouagadougou on May 11th to demonstrate their support for the country's transitional president, Captain Ibrahim Trahare. The rally was marked by impassioned calls for changes to the country's constitution and a rejection of upcoming elections. Prior to the event, the chief coordinator of the Black African Defense League Burkina Faso, Rasmane Soedago, urged unity and solidarity among the Burkina Bay people. He also warned against any attempts to disrupt the rally, stating that such actions would be considered a betrayal of our nation 
and dealt with harshly. The National Coordination of Citizens Watch Associations of Burkina Faso described the rally as a historic and solemn event, indicating the level of preparation and significance attached to the gathering. On the day, thousands of local activists and visitors from neighboring countries converged to back Traoré's administration. Organizers expressed their belief that the scheduled elections are unacceptable for maintaining peace in the country and called for constitutional changes to fully liberate and revive the country. We don't want to hear about another president. We don't want elections, chanted the leaders of local civil society organizations. This sentiment reflects the deep frustration felt by many Burkina Bay citizens with the country's political leadership since the death of Thomas Sankara. However, since Traoré's rise to power, the country has seen significant progress, particularly in the agricultural sector. According to Ghislaine Dabar, a member of the National Coordination of Citizens Watch Associations, the acquisition of tractors, plowing equipment, seeds, and agricultural inputs for the 2024 farming season has put Burkina Faso on a path toward food self-sufficiency. This includes the country becoming a wheat-producing nation, a feat previously thought impossible. The massive turnout and fervent support for Traoré's continued leadership suggests that many Burkina Bay are willing to forego the scheduled elections in favor of a more stable and productive transitional period under the military leader. As Burkina Faso's political future hangs in the balance, the voices of the people gathered in Ouagadougou will undoubtedly play a crucial role in shaping the country's path forward. Since assuming power in 2023, Burkina Faso's president, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, has been spearheading a series of sweeping reforms aimed at revitalizing the country's economy and securing its future. One of the key areas of focus for Traoré has been the agricultural sector. In 2023, the president launched two major programs, the Operation Agro Pastoral Offensive and the Presidential Initiative for Food Self-Sufficiency. These initiatives have seen the implementation of various projects to boost food production and ensure food security in Burkina Faso. Earlier this year, the government partnered with the African Development Bank Group to launch an emergency project to increase agricultural output in the country. The 38.4 million euros investment was specifically aimed at mitigating the impacts of the Russia-Ukraine conflict on Burkina Faso's food supplies. Notably in March, Traoré allocated a staggering 78 billion CFA francs, approximately $120 million, to purchase agricultural equipment, including tractors and essential inputs such as seeds and fertilizers. This move stands in stark contrast to the spending habits of some other African leaders, who might have opted for expensive, flashy vehicles. Traoré's unwavering commitment to the agricultural sector is a reflection of his vision for a Burkina Faso that can achieve self-sufficiency in food production. However, the president's reforms extend beyond just agriculture. Recognizing the potential of the mining industry, Traoré has also taken steps to bolster the sector. In 2023, he banned the export of gold, a move aimed at streamlining the industry. This has been accompanied by the construction of a gold refinery and a mining waste facility, initiatives that are expected to create value-added jobs and opportunities for the Burkina Bay people. Traoré's reforms have not been limited to the economic realm. Taking a cue from his predecessor, Thomas Sankara, the president has refused to accept a presidential salary and has even cut the salaries of other government officials. He believes that it is unacceptable for a few to earn millions, while the majority struggle to meet their basic needs. On the security front, Traoré has been actively addressing the challenges facing the country. He has been acquiring weapons and military equipment, outfitting soldiers and collaborating with international partners, including Russia and the Sahel Alliance, to ensure the stability and safety of Burkina Faso. These sweeping reforms have not gone unnoticed. Earlier this year, 
Burkina Faso was ranked among the top best governed countries in Africa by the World Governance Index, a testament to the progress made under Traoré's leadership. As Burkina Faso approaches a critical juncture in the coming weeks, the nation waits with anticipation to see whether Traoré will step down as president or continue to guide the country's transition. The decisions made shortly will undoubtedly shape the future of this West African nation. We'd like to hear your thoughts on Traoré's reforms and the direction Burkina Faso is heading. Share your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on this evolving story.